this week on Starting Line. The 2019 session is underway. We look back at what happened during the first week of session and look ahead at what's to come in our first starting line of the 91st legislative session. Each year, thousands of bills are introduced in the legislature. And on starting line, we take a look at select bills that we think you might find interesting or thought provoking. On January 8th, the legislature officially kicked off the 2019 session and the first bills have been introduced in the House. Those bills typically signal the issues the House will prioritize and get to work on. And a day after the first floor session of the year, House DFL leaders held a news conference to unveil the first 10 bills they plan to introduce. So the House DFLers traveled the state to listen to Minnesotans and have conversations about our shared values. We listened to people's hopes, their dreams, their fears, what keeps them up at night. And what we learned is that Minnesotans care deeply about our state and want to see each other succeed. Minnesota is a really strong state, but we know it can be even better. And that economic prosperity hasn't reached all families in all corners of the state. At the Capitol, our work will focus on improving economic prosperity for all families across the state. We're going to work very hard to ensure world-class educational opportunities, more affordable, more accessible health care, um, and investing in Minnesota's critical infrastructure from clean energy to transportation. Let's take a look at House Files 1 through 10. House File 1, the Great Start for All Minnesota Children Act. Representative Carly Cotiza Watoon has proposed a bill that aims to close the opportunity gap affecting our state. We suffer from one of the largest opportunity gaps in the country, and this gap starts long before kindergarten. Every Minnesota child deserves a great start to their life, and we all benefit when this happens. The Great Start for All Minnesota Children Act invests in prenatal care, home visiting for new parents, and early development and care, especially for low-income children between ages birth to three. House File 2 focuses on K-12 student support legislation. Representative Heather Edelson sponsors this bill that would, in part, provide funding for school mental health programs and school support professionals. House File 3 is a proposal that Representative Tina Liebling says will help make health care more affordable by introducing a Minnesota Care buy-in option. One of the big challenges is that individual insurance is too expensive and doesn't cover enough. And so our Minnesota Care buy-in option will provide a better opportunity for Minnesotans who buy their insurance in the individual market to have a product that covers more and costs less. House File 4 is a proposal that would hold pharmaceutical companies accountable in regards to alleged prescription drug price gouging. Representative John Lesh sponsors the proposal. House File 5, sponsored by Representative Lori Halverson, is being called the Paid Family and Medical Leave Act. Halverson's bill would make sure that Minnesotans have the access to the care and the time that they need to care for their loved ones to bond with a new baby and maintain their employment careers. Representative Tim Mahoney's bill, House File 6, would crack down on wage theft from employers. And did you know in this state, if you steal from a bank, you go to jail. If you steal from your employees, you go to the Bahamas. We're going to make it illegal to steal from your employees in this state. We're going to value work. We have always valued work. We're going to make it so that when you work, you get paid. Rural broadband expansion is the focus of House File 7. Representative Rob Eklund, who comes to the state capitol all the way from International Falls, carries the proposal that attempts to increase access to high-speed internet for more Minnesotans. House File 8 and House File 9, sponsored by Representative Dave Pinto and Representative Ruth Richardson, work toward preventing gun violence by increasing criminal background checks on gun sales and implementing extreme risk protection orders. And House File 10, sponsored by Representative Kelly Moeller, aims to protect Minnesotans from sexual harassment by making changes to the severe or pervasive standard for sexual harassment. It's certainly an ambitious agenda, and one that House Minority Leader Kurt Dowd does not support. The former House Speaker said in a statement, Democrats said today that it was essential to raise health care taxes. House Republicans couldn't disagree more. Our priority will be to lower taxes and health care costs for Minnesota families. The leader of the House Republicans spoke to us last December about how his caucus will approach the DFL agenda. 
You know, we're going to keep working on the same issues that we have uh, in the past. I know that Minnesotans appreciate the work we've done on reducing taxes and reducing health care costs and health insurance costs, uh, putting more money into roads and bridges. We're going to continue to work on those things. And, and our colleagues on the other side of the aisle ran their campaign saying they were going to do those very same things. So uh, if they are and, and they follow through with that, we'll roll up our sleeves and we'll be right there helping them every step of the way. Um, if they vote to raise health care costs or uh, vote to raise taxes on Minnesotans uh, at a time when we have a huge surplus, um, they're going to expect some pushback and, and we're going to be there to hold them accountable. So session is underway and as we march toward May 20th, we plan on taking a weekly look at bills that are introduced in the legislature that you might find interesting or make you think. To follow along with House coverage or for more on bills that are introduced in the House of Representatives, you can check out our session daily work on the House website, www.house.mn/sessiondaily. Thanks for watching Starting Line. We'll see you next week.